Other states have taken other measures, and, and it's an interesting trend. Both of you men have great experience, not only in public life, but also in private business. As an employer in those private businesses, have you ever required an employee to sign a non-disclosure agreement that would cover allegations of sexual harassment? That's number one. Number two, if you are elected governor or re-elected, what steps will you take to strengthen protections against sexual harassment in Illinois? Governor, would you like to start first? Sure. Uh, I have never signed an NDA um, in my life that would cover sexual harassment or anything remotely related to that. I have no personal NDAs whatsoever. Um, in terms of the state of Illinois, one of my first acts as governor was to lay out uh, ethics um, policies for my administration, and in there was a strict policy around sexual harassment, reporting it, prosecuting it, and having a zero tolerance policy within our administration. I've recommended similar um, legislation to be enacted in the General Assembly. Unfortunately, what's come to light over the last three years is there has been extensive sexual harassment and mistreatment of women and others um, in the legislature, um, in the Democratic Party, and Speaker Madigan has had his most senior, most trusted officers and lieutenants in the Democratic Party and in the General Assembly be accused of sexual harassment, and many have stepped down as a result. Uh, my challenger, Mr. Pritzker, was silent for over a week, wouldn't even say Mr. Madigan's name during those allegations and investigations. Um, Mr. Pritzker has not been a strong advocate and champion for women on these issues, whereas I have. And I look forward to changing the culture in government, changing the culture in ways that we can stop this mistreatment, stop the sexual harassment and abuse. Um, and I support the uh, legislation that has been recently introduced uh, that requires disclosure of any NDA that might uh, touch on these issues in any way that has been introduced in the General Assembly in recent weeks. So let me be clear about two things, then we'll go to Ms. Pritzker. First of all, you have never signed an NDA, but you've also never required one of an employee that they correct. signed once, right? That is correct. Secondly, is there any specific legislation that is now, that we, is not now current that you would propose or sign? For instance, in Maryland and these other states, they actually have a ban now on NDAs for businesses of more than 50 employees. Uh, would you support or, pro or propose such legislation here in Illinois or something else very specific? I would support that legislation that you outlined. Uh, our administration is actually reviewing best practices and um, best policies in other states and in other settings, both in the corporate world as well as in uh, the public service world. Um, I believe that we need to take strong action on these issues. Um, our General Assembly has been slow to act. Um, and I'll say that Speaker Madigan didn't even fill the Legislative Inspector General role for three years. There was no way for a woman who was mistreated to, come, to ask for an investigation. He specifically did not even have that office filled. And as a result, many harassment cases were never investigated. And I've talked to many women who feel like even today they are uncomfortable coming forward in the state government, in the legislature, because they believe that the system is rigged, that Speaker Madigan's control is too strong, and his oversight of the Legislative Inspector General and the system is such that they will not get justice if they come forward. Did you ask him to fill it, the position? Did you ever advocate for it, press him, push him? Uh, many of us have in our administration. There is no reason, no reason for that office to stay empty, none. And it's the, the, it's the job of the speaker to fill that position and to have it empty for years. There's just no excuse, none. Mr. It's, it shows the lack of uh, concern for carrying out justice on all, all these issues. So Mr. Pritzker. I have never signed NDAs or required NDAs that prevent people from reporting sexual harassment or, or keeping that silent. Um, in fact, in our campaign we've done, and in our business, we've done sexual harassment training so that people understand what's uh, not allowed in the workplace, but also what the reporting mechanisms need to be. That's something that needs to be strengthened in Springfield. Women who come forward bravely need to be believed. And after that, they need to have their claims 
investigated and by an independent investigator. And then we've got to make sure that uh, those who are uh, responsible for the sexual harassment or sometimes sexual assault are held accountable. Now, I really believe that this hasn't happened enough in Springfield. And I have called out Speaker Meg, and I have called out both Democrats and Republicans, because this doesn't just happen on one side of the aisle. There's sexual harassment in the Republican Party, and people should be held responsible there, too. In our administration, Juliana Stratton's and mine, um, we intend to have independent investigations when people come forward. We intend to make sure that people are held accountable for their actions if they are perpetrating sexual harassment or, God forbid, sexual now, I, assault. I know sexual harassment is an issue that doesn't necessarily know party boundaries, but at the same time, Speaker Maddox is perhaps the single most powerful person in Springfield, with all respect, Governor. I, I um, wouldn't disagree with that statement. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, what he does is more important than anybody else. Sure. Would you agree that he has fallen short, though, yes. on, on handling the issue of sexual yeah, harassment? Yes, and I said so, and I, it took too long to have those allegations and investigated. And you took a week to even say it. it. I did call it out. Uh, the governor knows that. He's just playing politics with this. The fact is that in an era when uh, we now have a Me Too movement, a Time's Up movement, um, it is critically important that we have processes for women to come forward and have those claims heard.